when it came time to determine what the very first fountain pen I was going to review was going to be, uh, the answer was pretty simple. It was going to be the very first fountain pen that I own, the Lamy All-Star, which is this right here, nice silver one. Uh, what had happened was I had a coworker who had a, a Lamy Safari and showed it to me and I thought it was kind of cool and different. I hadn't really considered fountain pens previously and he uh, directed me to an online retailer where I went up and took a look at a number of the pens and I really had no idea what I was looking at. Didn't understand anything when it came to do with nibs and the different models of pens and I just picked something that I thought looked cool and I ended up with this All-Star. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go over the parts of the pen and show you some of the things that I like and some of the things that I don't care for. We're going to show some measurements and then give a writing sample of a number of different nib sizes for the All-Star. So first of all, the All-Star is made of metal, a very light metal. It's usually very cool to the touch, so when you pick it up it uh, always has a pleasant temperature to it. Um, the cap is rounded and you can see on the finial it has a nice X to it, or a nice little X at the end here. And the clip is very springy and it always reminded me of a paper clip. But you can see how we have a rounded edge here and that then on the barrel we have two ink windows, one on either side. And at first I didn't understand why there was uh, an ink window on both sides, but basically it's to let the light through, or else if it was only on one side you really couldn't see what the ink level was. Uh, then we, at the very end here, we have an embossed Lamy logo at the end, and that, actually here, why don't we show it in the right direction, there we go. Uh, and that you can see that the barrel is actually squared off to where it's round and then squared on two sides. And on the end of the barrel here, uh, there's actually a little plastic piece that max matches the plastic on the, uh, on the finial, but there's a hole in it. But it's not an actual hole that goes all the way through to the barrel, so it must be part of the production process. But uh, it doesn't actually go all the way through. But you cannot use this pen as an eyedropper, basically because of the two ink windows here. The ink would just fall out. So um, it has a pull-off cap and the section of this particular model is a nice uh, black smoke that's somewhat translucent and it has a very unique section. You can see that it has a triangular section with two cutouts, two cut-ins on the sides and so it forces you into kind of a triangular grip or a tripod grip which is how I naturally hold my pens and so it was very natural for me uh, using the grip of this pen that I understand that some people with some more differing uh, grips or unique grips might not find this as comfortable because it's forcing you into a specific position but for me it worked fantastic and I loved it. Uh, that um, the nib is a steel nib and rather plain. Get a decent look at it here. This is this particular one is a medium nib. Or actually, no, this one is a fine nib. Excuse me. Uh, and that um, it, it makes it very, Lamy makes it very easy to exchange nibs. You can just basically pull this nib off and put on another nib so that if you wanted to experiment with a different nib you don't need to buy an entire new pen you could just purchase a nib take those off put those on you don't even need to change out the inks it's very easy to do so um, and very easy to put on new nibs with these uh, pens it uh, has a um, a, a solid feed and doesn't have any fins in the bottom of it uh, and that it either takes, the, the All-Star takes either a proprietary cartridge or a proprietary converter. And it actually comes with a, um, or it comes with a cartridge included. And when you receive the pen, it will, I'll show you what actually, how it actually shows up, is it actually shows up with a little cardboard barrel or a cardboard piece in here. Uh, and that's because there'll be a proprietary cartridge. This looks like this and that the cartridge will be in here and that what this plastic piece does is it prevents the cartridge from being pierced because the cartridge is long enough so that if you actually squeeze the barrel all the way down it will puncture the cartridge uh, it will puncture the cartridge and so that's why that 
piece of paper is there. So the first thing you would do is take that off and either put in your proprietary converter or put in the cartridge. The proprietary converter is actually kind of neat because it's a little difficult to see in here, but there are, I'll pull this out, a couple of nibs on the side here. You can see, kind of see a couple of little plastic nibs. As I turn it around, you can kind of see them shining a little bit. And they actually fit into this section here so that when you put it together, it will actually snap. And you can kind of hear that. And so now it is very secure in the pen. Then you can twist the pen or twist the barrel back on. And that uh, the the All Star is very durable. Um, with you know, it's really a knockabout pen, something you can throw in a book bag, and you don't have to worry too much about. Um, you know, I have several pens in my collection that I would be heartbroken if there was ever a scratch or a dent or any kind of um, a, a, any kind of mark on it whatsoever, but. I don't feel the same way about the All-Star, that uh, some of the little dings and wear actually, for me, kind of add a bit of character to it, so that it shows that this pen has been used and loved, as opposed to, like I said, a lot of other pens that I would be devastated if it had any kind of mark on and you want to keep as pristine as possible. So I think it adds a little bit of character to it. So for an entry-level pen that's basically one step up from the Lamy Safari, uh, the All-Star is outstanding. Uh, that it, there's not much that I don't like about this pen. Uh, it looks cool, it, it writes really well, it's durable, uh, and it's relatively inexpensive. So uh, that's it for the review. Uh, and so let's take a look at some measurements and then I'll show you a writing sample with a couple of different nib sizes. So here we go with the writing sample for the Lamy All-Star. Uh, this one is the silver and it's a fine and as I had mentioned previously that Lamy actually comes out with new colors on a regular basis and has a lot of different varying colors uh, when it comes to the, the All-Stars as well as the Safaris. So this is the silver. Then I, we also have a copper orange here which is one of my favorite colors of, uh, of any pen I own. Uh, I just really love this color and this one's in a medium. And this is one of my recent acquisitions, which is this blue, and this is a 1.1. Now, as I had mentioned previously, that you can just purchase the individual nibs, and it's very easy to exchange these, but I saw this blue, and one of those things I just couldn't be without it. And so I, uh, I like this blue a lot and, uh, and just needed to have it. So let's take a look at a writing sample for the find that we have here. So we have the Lamy All Star and this is a fine and the ink here is Diamine Ruby Red. So you can see uh, my handwriting isn't the, uh, the greatest, it's not the prettiest, but it'll do in order to give you an idea of what's going on here. Uh, this is a, a steel nib, it's not going to have that much flex to it, especially a, a steel fine. That was me messing up, not the feed. And as far as line variation, um, you can push a tiny bit out, but then again, this is a, a fine nib. And even though it's fine, it does lay down a fairly wet enough line. And now we'll try some fast writing. I'll just do some initials, which is something I can generally write fast. And the feed keeps up just fine there. So now let's take a look at the medium. So here is the medium.
and this is going to be Faber Castell Royal Blue. Now the uh, the medium nibs are going to be a little more generous. Generous. That is uh, a uh, a a Western medium or European medium, and so that it's um, going to lay a lot more down than a uh, a Japanese medium. And you can squeeze a little bit more out of here, but again, then we're again we're talking about a steel nib that doesn't have a ton of flex to it. As far as line, you can get a little bit out of here, and Again, it's fairly, fairly wet. And I've really never had an issue with ink flow when it comes to the All-Stars. So now let's take a look at the 1.1. And this is going to be Diamine Shimmering Sands. And it does have the, uh, the, the gold flecks that are in here, but um, it's not necessarily super visible right now. I kind of like what the 1.1s do as far as, and I don't have the, the prettiest handwriting, but it just adds a little bit of flair to it, which I do care for. And you can see that this one has much more variation between the up and down and left and right strokes. And I can get a little bit more. But again, this is a stainless steel nib, so there's not going to be a, a ton of flex to it. And a little bit drier there but it still does a decent job of keeping up well maybe some of the faster strokes going side to side doesn't keep up quite as well but that's not necessarily what this pen is made for so so there we have it we have our three Lamy All-Stars and uh, as I had mentioned before as far as a, uh, a somewhat entry-level pen that they're outstanding uh, and that would highly recommend picking one up and uh, that they're a great starter pen and uh, and very much worth the money so thank you very much and we'll talk to you later bye